The nervous system is composed of two cell types, uh, nerve cells or neurons, and glial cells. Now, people are generally familiar with nerve cells or what makes up our brain, uh, but interestingly, glial cells are actually more abundant in uh, our brain and other vertebrates and constitute the major cell type. Surprisingly, perhaps, the function of glial cells is not uh, very well understood. And so our laboratory is uh, very interested in uh, trying to understand what these cells might contribute, if anything, to the functioning of the nervous system. Uh, what we've shown already is that glial cells in C. elegans bear some similarities to glial cells in other systems, and so we decided that this would be a perfect uh, place to try and understand glial roles in nervous system function. The studies described in this paper, uh, which were carried out by Talant Patsai, a graduate student in my lab, and Maya Tevlin, who's a uh, postdoctoral fellow in my lab, look at a sensory organ of C. elegans, which is required for mediating a variety of different responses of the animal to the environment. It allows the animals to sense uh, in odorants and tastants, temperature, pheromones. And what Talan showed was that when he ablated the glial cells, so he removed these glial cells by a couple of different methods, the animals now in general were no longer uh, able to sense specific odorants um, or temperature, for example. So um, these results suggest that in vivo, in a living behaving animal, glial cells play an essential role in uh, the functioning of the nervous system. So here's an example of a wild type worm which is placed on a plate that has a ring of a substance called glycerol and it usually doesn't like glycerol and so what you see is that every time the worm hits the boundary of glycerol it bounces back into the area that does not contain it. So essentially the worm is confined to this area and the reason it does is it because it senses the glycerol with its sensory organ and uh, recognizes that it's something that it doesn't like. In glia-bladed animals, though, you see something different. What you see is that an animal placed in a similar ring of glycerol does not avoid the glycerol ring anymore. And in fact, what you see is uh, a behavior like this, where the animal now basically ignores the presence of this uh, aversive substance, suggesting that it's incapable of uh, actually sensing the environment. So essentially our findings uh, show three things. The first is that in order for uh, the nervous system to function, for us or worms to sense their environment, they not require not only neurons but also glial cells. The second uh, thing that the finding shows uh, is uh, the beginning of a mechanism of how these glial cells actually influence neuronal activity to allow us to sense uh, the environment. And the third thing is that it uh, shows uh, similarity between sensory organs, uh, the structures that receive information from the environment, and synapses, which are structures that are uh, deep inside our brain, which uh, connect two neurons to each other.